towards appropriate resilience. As an architect, you design for the presence with an awareness of the past for a future which is essentially unknown. Norman Foster Reflection on our completed work focuses attention on values held, threads of continuity and architectural position. Inasmuch as a retrospective analysis is valuable in respect of an incisive view of created outcome, equally it provides a fertile opportunity to consider the future. My endeavour in this presentation is to touch on past work, examine selected completed projects and offer insight into some future schemes. Resilience and materiality in our residential work is the fo focus, and this represents work undertaken over the last three decades. Nick Prum and I established EPA in 1989 in Durban, both having graduated from the School of Architecture at the University of Natal. We often reflect on the impact of architectural school and what its pedagogic position imparted. Our practice grew from bedroom to boardroom. Today, we're a big fish in a small provincial pond in South Africa's surfing village. We engage in a very broad range of work in terms of scale and typology and practice in two consolidated studios in Durban and Mauritius choosing to collaborate in other African cities and countries where opportune. The drama at the heart of architecture is the eternal struggle between utility and beauty, conjoining the pragmatic and poetic is the essence of the tension created between construction and art and is the energy of ingenuity. While it is patent that the aesthetic experience can be distinguished from functional satisfaction, it cannot be separated from it or rendered independently from it. We recognize that the experience architecture generates cannot be described by other means, such as graphic representations, photography, film, model, and words. Our position rests significantly in creating appropriate, authentic, contextual responses which, while delivering functional adequacy and climatic sensibility, promote an expressive architecture which exudes a spirit and is ultimately memorable. Paramount is an overriding legibility where the big idea is overtly displayed in a simple and bold way deploying honest tectonic materiality. We have tended to deploy design strategies which seek to maximize opportunity with an economy of means, and this approach drives singular spatial concepts, clear structural expression, and climatically responsive envelopes. We've always treated the plan as political and the section as poetic, the latter being the driver of spatial interrogation. We view buildings as cultural projects, products which result from the constant and dynamic interplay between form and program. Ultimately, we believe that architecture is about people, about space, and about light, and that the focus should be on creating communities, inspired spaces, and ought to facilitate the unexpected. Our current endeavours move towards increasingly adapted spaces, enclosures which offer bespoke expression, and structure which seems seeks a maximisation of economy. Ultimately, like Oscar Niemeyer, we believe our architecture should be easy to understand and enjoy, and hopefully hard to forget. We concentrate in this presentation on selected residential works. The lineage of our residential projects stem from a series of steel-framed projects 
The Glenkeen Studio in Durban is a composition of structural frames sprung off a concrete blade wall. A simple plan and section served to deliver a clear response to climate and context, capturing the spirit of a valley stream in its dense forest setting. This design solution has proved to be a significantly resilient model from which many, many other projects have derived. In respect of its success, from a one-room deep space, its sectional arrangement to the low-maintenance material palette, the pavilion has delivered an outstanding result over the two decades since it was built. This small guest pavilion, located on a Val River weekend estate in the Free State, extends the idea of a hinged skeletal roof on a linear anchor. Rendered in core 10 and concrete, its pinwheel plan elevates into a sculpture set in the felt, exploring notions of implied and ambiguous enclosure. Resilience is demonstrated in the deployment of materials which age and weather gradually externally, almost imperceptibly, and then are extended into the interior which, is, which represents the success of this project. Derived from a series of explorations into sweeping, bowed roofscapes, Hirsch's hideaway farmhouse presents extruded linear veranda forms with the geometry of oversized roofs tying into the structural articulation. Roof exaggeration over narrow floor scapes frees up the north elevation for maximum glazing, promoting natural ventilation, open thresholds and capitalization of views. A typical coastal building model allowing living spaces to open in two directions, House Hansen in Sheffield Beach capitalizes on panoramic Indian Ocean views and facilitates protected inland facing outdoor spaces which are usable in inclement weather, particularly when it's windy. The butterfly sectional roof form heralds a recurring theme and refines structural connections with its thin roof edges. South-facing clear story lighting allows for natural light to penetrate to the lower levels of this hillside house, thus recovering from its adverse topographical condition. A relatively brief lineage of wall-dominant houses precedes a number of residences completed in the last five years. This approach presents a distinct departure from lightweight roof-dominant houses we've pursued for so many years and so heralds a new design direction. House Rosenberg is a construct of cubic elements, truncated form and sloping planes, creating a dynamic formal tension in the elemental assembly of the building. Its purposefully relaxed geometry contrasts the overall Cartesian geography of most of its residential predecessors. A dominance of off-shutter concrete and stucco wall planes juxtaposed with raw timber screens and panelled walls deliver a distinctly different character from the lightweight uh, constructs of previous examples illustrated.
The first house that we're focusing on represents an exemplar, an, ex in, an extensive exploration of steel-framed houses. The defining aspects of this building are the idea of a single space house embracing a remarkable environment and creating a solution which ensured minimal environmental intrusion. With its genesis on a paper napkin sketch over a calamari lunch, a long journey ensued with the realization of a construct set amongst the Feinbos on an exposed rocky peninsula in the village of Roy Else. Conceived as a minimal pavilion with subdivisible internal spaces foiled with mechanically operable screens, the house delivers a proactive presence in its context. Counterpointed by a freestanding pool and subterranean entry court, the elongated pavilion with its floating curvilinear roof displays a restrained architectural language which hovers gently in its unique setting. The Roy Els House significantly evolves the vacation residence typology. By dematerializing the notion of cellular space, blurring the traditional regime of private and semi-private space, and offering variant spatial connections and refuge. Every aspect of the house is designed to reinforce a holiday quality and lifestyle. Capitalizing on its panoramic views across the Atlantic Ocean, the steel frame box with its hull-shaped timber-clad roof is designed to entirely dematerialize enclosure. All the external walls are sliding folding glass doors and are filtered by slatted timber shutters, which open hydraulically to become verandas and to screen the glazing, the glazing below. When closed, these screens form a continuous secure filter, which then allows variant opening arrangements the isotropic ocean views to be framed and variously captured. The roof sectional form creates a continuous clear story, which is a common thread in many of our um, lightweight building screens, promoting inclined distant views to the surrounding mountains. Being located in a Mediterranean climate, the concept is reduced to a floating umbrella which climatically responds with a layered facade, facilitating natural ventilation, attenuating privacy, and creating a one-room deep space in its purest form. The second house we're focusing on is House Mansfield. A private residence designed for a young family in the Durban area investing in their community and within walking distance to local schools. This brief was outlined to respond directly to the local context and climate, using passive ventilation techniques to create a home which is engaging and cognizant of the landscape around it and the epitome of a family unit home. Set within lush bush landscape, the approach Enclosed by walls to form external spaces and gain privacy from neighbours, the site is further layered by new design intervention. The exaggerated roof overhangs both shade and protect the building and capture rainwater, which is channeled to storage tanks housed below the house for winter months. Cantilevered balconies off the bedrooms allow an extended living area, screened from early morning sun and breezes, the perforated aluminium screens retracting as required to prioritize natural ventilation or privacy. A narrow footprint and interstitial screening techniques allow flexibility for entertaining or privacy. The open plan and sectional arrangement engages the routine of daily life and the circulation routes dramatize both the material palette and the context. Volumes and internal sliders between public and semi-private zones give adaptability to close off or engage with various spaces across both levels, with the kitchen as the fulcrum. 
Large glass sliding doors open along the two principal edges of the living area, allow a seamless, allowing a seamless transition and a variety of external veranda spaces. Natural oak used for floors, ceilings and joinery combined with polished and off shutter concrete and ochre external tones provide the earthy setting which the clients wished for with a low maintenance environment to suit their lifestyle. A continuous glazed clear story is a, is a connection to the outdoors from any point on the upper level and allows the natural deep light into individual spaces. The rainwater collecting concrete box gutter is expressed between the length of the building, beyond the length of the building and with, within the circulation spaces below as a curved off shutter soffit leading the eye to the terminations of view. The entrance space, which heralds a floating staircase and characterizes the materiality of the building, reinforces its African context and its connectivity with the immediate environment surrounding. The next house we're focusing on is the Queen's Avenue House in Durban, a secret panhandle site offered a secluded and tranquil locality to seed the design of this large private family residence. The extensive brief was rationalized into three distinct programmatic components, living, sleeping, and service spaces, which are distributed into separate rectilinear containers loosely arranged on the site to create a series of informal courtyard spaces. The Queen's Avenue house exhibits a less frenetic formal aggregation than its predecessors, principally arising from the generosity of its site. The intersecting arrangement of four individual spatial extrusions is punctuated by the spatial connections of these wings, resulting in a dynamic architectonic condition. The program is distributed in a linear fashion in order for all the living and sleeping functions to access generous garden views. The idea of transparency and internal external spatial connection is well developed by virtue of the privacy afforded by the site's topography and established peripheral planting. Planar expression of forms enclosed with large glazed frontages result in a minimal restrained language. A limited material planet pellet of off-shutter concrete, cortine steel and hardwood have been combined with light-colored plastered primary fabric to reinforce the integration of the building within its context and to imbue a quiet yet tactile quality. Exterior materiality is extended internally, being rendered in light oak off-shutter concrete, white stucco, and natural stone floor finishes. Juxtaposed materiality is evidenced here in a somewhat minimalist interior. An air of spareness is delivered, providing a visual quiet. An elemental combination of water, landscaping, raw core tin, crafted hardwood and concrete serve to capture the essence of our resilience endeavors. In the fourth of our focus residential projects <clears throat> is a small enclave called 98 Bellamont in Amschloti Beach. This is a unique four-villa enclave located on a prime coastal site in Amschloti, north of Durban, set on the elevated crest of a dense subtropical <coughs> forested dune. The approach to the property is both enticing and discreet, being framed by a giant milkwood tree in its forest setting. The enclave is a very private and exclusive group of villas 
created to capitalize on the remarkable environmental quality and prospect of the site. I originally purchased the site to build my own house many years ago and then decided that with a family of adult children, the need, need for a large home fell away. The choice to share the location opportunity and develop the site with three other villas became the development directive and reinforces the residential density imperative. Ultimately, I sold the other units to long-standing friends, which has proved to make for a wonderful outcome. The slope of the coastal dune site presented the opportunity to create two sets of linked villas, one on the upper zone of the site and the other on the lower platform on the fringe of the forest. The upper villas overlook the lower ones and the sectional arrangement on the site maintains and protects the outlook and privacy of all outdoor spaces, verandas and outdoor courtyards. Enjoying panoramic views of the Indian Ocean, each villa is arranged over two levels, with all living areas extending to elevated covered terraces facing the sea and formerly landscape courtyards on the inland side. Deep verandas interface family living spaces and swimming pools in private garden courtyards, allowing seclusion and protection from prevailing ocean winds. Each villa enjoys a slightly different configuration on the lower level, which accommodates four bedrooms and a gallery space in each instance. The two primary buildings skew to respond to topography and view opportunity. Effectively, a series of upside down houses with living up and sleeping down Small double height sculpture courtyards provide a landscape focus in these lower gallery spaces, admitting light and promoting natural ventilation. The bedrooms all have open ensuite bathrooms with the master suites enjoying broad views of the ocean. Discreet paved driveways and shaded parking carved into the topography retain privacy and formalize individual entrances to each villa. The composition exhibits a boldly legible but not overpowering architectural expression, allowing the forms to blend into the verdant environs. Architecturally, the villas exhibit a contextual response and crafted aesthetic with wide roof overhangs and extensive glazing characterizing the composition. Strong linear forms imbue the architecture with a unique and dramatic quality. Materials have been carefully selected to be tough and to withstand the location's coastal conditions and to impart a raw, unassuming finish. The villa structures of crafted off shutter concrete overtly display extensive and slender cantilever roofs. Thin edged verandas and angled blade walls frame each villa to create perceptible individual identity and to promote privacy. Dark colored stucco is applied to the courtyard walls, garages and gatehouse, juxtaposing the raw concrete. Gates in perforated copper-colored aluminium and external hardwood to secondary elements serve to animate the buildings and impart a resilient richness with a constrained materiality palette. The living spaces are broad and open with stacking sliding glass facades promoting a relaxed coastal lifestyle. This open arrangement effectively creates a living umbrella to capitalize on the verdant indigenous landscape and seaside climate. Generous kitchens enjoy a prominent position in the open living space, promoting family-focused living. The interiors are carefully crafted to create an air of simplicity and to promote a quiet sense of seclusion. 
The off-shutter concrete shell of the villas is reflected internally on walls and soffits, offset with selected stucco walls and ceiling bulkheads in extreme white. Polished concrete floors in all spaces and extending to verandas outside provide a neutral base contrasting the warm quality of natural white oak deployed on the stairs and applied to kitchens, joinery and wall panelling. In my villa, the spirit of a casual oceanside villa is amplified with a selection of low-strung couches, white dining seating and a selection of classic furniture pieces. This backdrop is counterpointed with a collection of brightly coloured South African oil paintings and African stone carvings, capturing the spirit of the locale. The spare quality of the interior spaces of these villas is ultimately designed to frame the blue vastness of the Indian Ocean as an ever-present focus upon the, the panoramic horizon. Here in the background, a quiet, wind-free courtyard which accommodates the primary outdoor living space with swimming pool. On the lower levels are all the bedrooms, with the main bedrooms on the outer periphery of the uh, primary blocks. Here, a main bedroom exhibiting its connection with the adjacent forest and the view to the Indian Ocean beyond uh, through the vegetation of the forest. The use of perforated aluminium screens serves to create um, protected openings from a security perspective and to promote natural ventilation. This is a small library adjacent to the courtyard delivering light and ventilation to the lower level and this accommodates um, shared workspace for the family. A detail of the staircase, simple lightweight element reinforcing the application of the materiality that, that I've described earlier. Finally, a view of the courtyard space which connects directly through the house to the ocean beyond. This solution we've used ubiquitously in our beach homes through the Cape Elsewhere in Africa, throughout KZN, is a very successful um, planning methodology to deal with, with um, ocean breezes and to create secluded private spaces. Our current future work in the residential sector concentrates on the marriage of the early tectonic lightweight residences that we had explored for two and a half decades, and the more recent stereotomic constructs uh, in concrete and uh, other solid materiality. We are busy with two villas, or rather collections of villas, in West Africa, specifically Cote d'Ivoire. And the first one of these is on the island of Belay. This is a private uh, family resort with uh, villas to accommodate um, family members and uh, visiting dignitaries. Here you can see clearly the construct comprising two primary stereotomic elements with a tectonic steel framed element as a fair and deal truss accommodating bedrooms on the upper level. This is a view of the same building from the other side overlooking the lagoon beyond and to the left guest accommodation and the screened element uh, as a bridge with a 30 meter clear span over the primary living area accommodates all the bedrooms. Here are three villas set in this remarkably 
a beautiful, verdant environment uh, tucked away amongst the palm trees right adjacent to the beach of the lagoon. And once again, these buildings picking up the principle of a stereotomic base in solid dyed concrete and the upper elements as tectonic lightweight structures accommodating the sleeping spaces. The second of these residences being presented is a private home in the city of Abidjan, set right on the lagoon in a prime area. And this comprises a series of pavilion-like elements which are linked together with, with glass bridges and walkways. Here we're concentrating on elevating uh, spaces uh, with an organic planning arrangement uh, and exploring, re-exploring the notion of the roof as a dominant element um, driving the, the design outcome. This is an image of the entrance which highlights the notion of a organically formed roof which perforates as it cantilevers away from the envelope of the building and uh, dematerializes to generate lightness. The third image represents a collection of villas, gym and private spaces uh, with a raised swimming pool dealing with the rising uh, waters of the uh, lagoon adjacent. Um, these schemes are both underway presently in terms of design development and uh, we look forward to successful outcomes of these projects as they um, serve to stretch our residential oeuvre uh, which we've built up over the last 33 years. Thank you very much for listening to me.